Hello, and welcome to the 927th pre-UTA podcast. This podcast is presented in three parts. First, we cover announcements and the general schedule. Next, we hear directly from our wing commander. And finally, we finish with a guest speaker highlighting one of Air Force Reserve Command's mission focus areas of readiness, resilience, or reform. This month, we'll focus on resilience as we talk to the Florida representative for Military One Source, who happens to be formal aerial porter and is excited to share all the resources available to us and our families through Military One Source. But first, some announcements. COVID vaccinations are happening this weekend. If you want it, you can get it during this UTA. We talk more about it with Colonel Stauffer, but you can also check with your CSS. They're keeping some lists. Be on the lookout for extremism stand-down training information. This is a DOD mandated training that will be happening during this UTA and next UTA down in the squadron level. While the training is wing-wide, the wing is not all meeting together. Each squadron has their own plan for completion, and you should check with your supervisors to know, make sure that you get it done. Step packages are due by the end of the UTA, and they need to be uploaded to the FSS SharePoint. More information is on a PSA if you're interested. On a similar note, the non-EAD Airman Commissioning, which is formerly known as the Deserving Airman Commissioning Program, those packages are going to be due next UTA on 2 May. So if you're interested in applying or if you're interested in submitting one of your airmen, those packages will be due next month. So now's the time to get them done. Speaking of packages, the RSSB, the Reserve School Selection Board packages for officers, those are due by COB 1 June. Fitness testing will start on 1 July. The circumference is no longer scored, but will resume 1 October. Points for runs, sit-ups, push-ups will change to compute to 100% fitness score. For all the officers out there, there's an officer development session that's in the works for Saturday of the next UTA. So during the May UTA, be on the lookout for an officer development session. Mark your calendars. The Tampa Bay Air Fest is happening on 26 to 27 March of 2022. That's right. The air show is coming back. It's AFA scholarship time. AFA has $100,000 in academic and flight training scholarships for airmen and families. The deadline is 30 April, and you can learn more information at www.afa.org forward slash scholarships. All right, and that's all we have for the announcements. Now on to the schedule. For Saturday at 0730 is newcomers. 0730 is also when C. Bernie starts. There's also another C. Bernie class at noon. And then at 1300 is CDC and PME testing. Also at 1300 is the quarterly safety rep meeting. And at 1730 is the Catholic mass in the chapel. On Sunday at 715 is the Protestant contemporary service held in building six auditorium. At 0900 is the CSS in-house training. At 0930 is the art and sorts meeting. At noon is the top three meeting. And at 1230 is the rising six meeting. And at 1300 is CDC and PME testing. And that's all for the schedule. For more information on the schedule or any of the announcements that we made, you can find the schedule and the announcements on the SharePoint page for the 927th. There's a PSA page and there's also a calendar on the front page. And now for a word with our wing commander, Colonel Doug Stauffer, the 927th Air Air Refueling Wing Commander. Thank you, sir, for taking time to talk with us. Thanks, Lisa. Great to be here today. Excited for this April UTA. Lots of things happening as usual on our UTA weekends. But one thing that I think is on everyone's mind and we hear about it in the news, COVID vaccinations. Can you tell us what's happening on the drill weekend with that? Yes, I'd love to. You uh, should be aware if you live in the state of Florida that Florida has now opened up vaccines at their FEMA site, which is the big ones over at the Greyhound track. And uh, they are allowing, I think it's 18 years and older starting next week. So this week, I think it's 40 and older and next week it's 18 and older. So if you are not on status and, you know, don't want to wait for the UTA or whatever, there are those options out there to go do it through the, through the FEMA site. And you will see uh, uniformed members there at the FEMA site who uh, may or may not be from McDill, uh, but are helping with that effort throughout the U S but specifically to our UTA, we are going to have a arm mass vaccination. It'll be the first dose. It'll be the Pfizer vaccine. And it will be uh, this coming up UTA, the April UTA. So you should already by now have received, and and this is a week, I'm recording this a week prior to the UTA. You should already by now have been called by your CSS and been requested. Are you a volunteer? Yes or no. And then that information is going to be used within this next week to get you an appointment time to come in. We are basically still using the tiered levels 
levels, the 1A, 1B, 1C, and, and 2, but we are working into the 2. Tier 2 is the standard uniformed service member. So that's all of you listening to this uh, podcast uh, will be eligible. However, we are going to start with the, the top tier and go down. But what we're going to find is there's not going to be enough people in that top tier to use up all the vaccines that we have, and then we will keep working down the list. So what I'm here to tell you is that if you are a uniform member uh, here for the UTA and a UTA status, and you've communicated it ahead of time that you want the the vaccine, it is still voluntary, then I expect the vaccine to be available for you to get the first dose. It also then happens to work out three weeks later from the April UTA is our May UTA. Well, three weeks is also the required uh, wait time for the second dose for the Pfizer vaccine. So we will be getting our second dose and setting up a shot clinic on the May UTA. If I had initially said no, that I don't want the vaccine, but then I changed my mind when I come in for the UTA or before I come in for the UTA, I can tell somebody and still get it. Oh, yes. So um, please communicate that through the CSS. There is a wing wide spreadsheet that we're tracking that on so that what we don't want to do, the reason we're we're doing that and not just say, hey, show up if you want it, is these vaccines have to be stored at a significantly cold temperature. And once you open up these things, we can't refreeze them and, and stick them back. And we have to be good stewards of this vaccine that we get. So therefore, we need to know if we open this up, we're going to vaccinate, you know, that number of people. So that's why we're scheduling these so that there is a zero waste. There is a small possibility that we will have, you know, some left over at the end, no shows or something, but we also have contingency plans for that to get some, you know, some other people in to, to use them. And we're going to be in Hangar 5, which is the uh, same place the active duty sets up what they call the pod, which is the place where, you know, all the vaccines are given. Uh, and it should be relatively seamless. You'll walk in, you'll fill out the form. It's the form 207 and that's going to say, yes, I'm a volunteer. And then there's a little video that you're supposed to watch. If you've already seen it, you can go past, you'll get the shot. There's a mandatory 15 minute waiting period after you get the shot, just to check for any reactions. You don't have to get re-examined or anything. It's just, Hey, if you feel fine, you show your ticket and you walk out the door and you ought to be in there in 30 minutes or less, you know, for the whole total time to get your vaccine. Okay. And speaking of the DHA form, 207. My understanding is that everyone during the UTA has to fill that out, regardless of whether or not they're a vac- they get vaccinated or if they choose not to. We just want to account for everybody making a choice when the vaccine is available. That is correct. So the 207 will be required to be turned in if you are a volunteer and you are getting the shot. That will 100% have to be there, kept on record that you are a volunteer for the shot. Then we are internal in the wing, attempting to collect in just hard copy form those that say no. And that is simply for the fact of ensuring that we've made contact with everybody. The vac- vaccine is not mandatory at this point. It may or may not in the future. Time will tell. There is going to be, there. there is some that have expressed fears that if you say no to the vaccine, that that's going to be, you know, used against you. And, and it's, you know, some sort of administrative reason. Number one, that would be illegal for us to do it. And if, if you would experience that, you should be reporting that right away to your IG. That's what our IG queue exists for to take claims where someone would perhaps take action against you that isn't your fault. Our wing will not do that. There will be some obvious consequences. There may be certain TDYs or countries or theaters or missions that require a COVID vaccine and you may not be eligible to go on that, but that is not, that's not a negative. That's not someone purposely, you know, ruining your career. That's a consequence if, if this other country or entity uh, requires that. Uh, we're starting to see some of that with cruise lines, the state of Hawaii, other things are, you know, they're toying around this idea if the COVID vaccine is going to be mandatory. Uh, But for now, we as the military is the 927th. It is completely your choice. Uh, I have gotten it and I'll just throw out there and say that and I'm encouraging you to if that's something you want to do. But once again, I will never mandate it at this point. I got my second one today. So uh, (laughs) there we go. I should be covered by the time you are actually listening to this prior to the UTA. Okay. So from one hot topic to another, from COVID COVID to the extremism stand down. Uh, Active duty has already done theirs and we during our UTA will be doing some activities for that. Can you speak to that a little bit? The Department of Defense has directed an extremism stand down for the entire department and then the Air Force Reserve Command has put kind of their spin on it. So what we have done in the wing, Colonel Steven is the main POC right under him is a senior master sergeant green from the ASTS. And then there's a team working under him of three or four others in the wing. They are collecting, there's a plethora of information out there, you know, videos, examples, talking points. There are 
three main talking points that have to be discussed, but this will be handled at a unit level. So this will not be a, a wing. We're not all going to get together as a commander's call and, and do this or that. It will be as each unit can work it into the training schedule when it best fits them. There are, like I said, the mandatory talking points that have to be discussed. There'll be a time for small group discussions, those kind of things. So that will be some units may actually get that going this UTA, uh, April. You'll certainly see some doing it in May. Uh, our goal is to have the majority of it done by the end of the May UTA, but our deadline is actually the end of the June UTA to get 100% of the wing, uh, which is a trackable item complete with that uh, extremism stand down time. Okay, so budget during the last UTA talked about needing to get our projected duty into um, ARCnet and uh, the importance of that and f- being fiscally responsible at the wing level. So can you talk to, um, if people haven't done that yet, is it too late for them to put their duties in ARCnet or should they still work on that? So we're still working on the best way, of course, to come with a year plan on when you specifically want to do this annual tour or this uh, fly team, if you're a flyer or a UTA or an RMP or the various different statuses that we have. And ARCnet is the best available tool that we have at the moment. The reason we're doing this, that we're asking you to put that in, is so we can get those things ex- executed and in the systems of record, primarily arrows and UTAPs. And the reason we're doing that is, is we have gotten from three-star level down indications that money is tight and it's been tight most years, right? This is not new to any of you listening, but if the money is not executed, just saying we have it in our bank account is not good enough. Uh, What we're going to see as time goes by, that money is going to be harvested for higher priority needs if we have not been able to execute that, even though it is listed in, you know, in our books, in our accounts. So our goal, my goal for you doing this is to get ensure that you have the statuses that you need to stay trained and stay ready. And the way we need to do that is we need to get those annual tour orders cut and we need to get them cut as soon as possible. We need to put the the fly teeps in, the RMPs, all of the things that we're going to use so that those are actually now a funded order or a funded 40 alpha or whatever, depending on the status so that the money doesn't get taken for other uses. That is our goal. Uh, we are 50% through the year. We should be well over 50% executed because what I want, we ought to have most of our third quarter stuff cut by now and starting to go into fourth quarter, cutting those things just to reserve that money. We're not quite there yet. All of your RAs know this and they should be contacting you and saying, hey, when can I cut these, uh, you know, this status or that status? Okay. So if you if you haven't gotten your stuff into ARCnet, do it immediately so that they can use that, we can get that money accounted for. On to some good professional development opportunities here in the wing. I know that our office benefits from this last year, but the step two opportunity is due by this UTA to the in, into the FSS SharePoint. So can you talk to a little bit about step and why it's important and, and how airmen can take advantage of it? Well, hopefully this isn't the first time you're hearing about this. We had it on the last podcast and you'd probably be a little bit behind the eight ball, honestly, if you haven't started it by now uh, because it is due. And uh, obviously the higher ranks, the chief, the senior master sergeant, uh, those ranks are very hotly contested, even within the wing level and certainly at AFRIC level. Uh, But this allows you to, in a rank that is, say, graded as a a tech sergeant on the books, allow you to be promoted to master sergeant and remain in that tech sergeant rank. And that's what the step two does, obviously, for for exceptional performance, right? That's what that stands for. So I would encourage you, uh, hopefully you already have, but be talking with your supervisor and get those packages in to allow you to, to get that extra promotion, even though your position that you're currently in, you know, may not allow it. And all you supervisors, if, you know, if the airmen may be a little bit shy, which I don't feel like airmen, you guys should be shy about that, getting yourself up front if that's where you think you want to be. But supervisors really look hard at your airmen and see if there's an opportunity to utilize that within your offices. Um, And another good opportunity that I think this wing has probably done better than any wing I've ever been at is the non-EAD Airmen Commissioning Program, which used to be the Deserving Airmen Program. Those are due to career development next UTA. If you haven't already started them, you've got a little time to start working them now so that you can have them ready for next month. But can you talk a little bit about that commissioning program? Sure. As you know, with COVID and some other things, we didn't do one in in 20. Uh, we had a whole bunch in 2019. We put eight people through in the wing, or at least that's that was the initial number. Not all eight ended up happening. Those are enlisted individuals who are now officers in the wing, uh, and all of them, I believe, are back. Not all of them have gone through all the training, you know, as far as, say, a readiness officer 
officer, logistics readiness officer training or whatever, not all of that is complete, but they are back in the wing wearing the second lieutenant rank, which is awesome. We're not going to have eight this year. I think the number is three or four that we're going to have for the wing of positions that will be open. And then it's going to involve obviously submitting a package. And then there's going to be an interview with wing leadership and uh, and a selection process to discern, determine those most deserving of, of being commissioned. And it's so fun to see those um, folks walking around with their new new rank on. And then also in the same vein of all of these great opportunities to reward our airmen or recognize the great work that our airmen are doing, RSSB packages are going to be due in June. Can you talk a little bit about the opportunities that happen in RSSB and why airmen should look at those? Right. So RSSB is fairly competitive these days. Uh, we were fortunate that we had some selected in the wing for this last. It goes twice a year and they are programs. This would be for officers uh, and there are programs like SOS, for example, uh, or um, perhaps, uh, you know, ACSC or Air War College in residence schools or some other things. Uh, there's leadership today and tomorrow. There's uh, fellowships or interactions between NATO and things overseas. A, a bunch of different kind of professional development type things. And they are hard fought uh, to get those positions. But I would still encourage you to apply for that and hopefully you're selected for one of those schools. RC NSC is one that I completed a handful of years ago and a fantastic experience reserve component national security course and it was really good stuff uh, and it allows you to get out of your career field there for a second maybe go tdy or virtual depending how it's set up and learn some things that maybe aren't what you're doing on a on a daily basis so professional development opportunities great opportunity um it takes a, a lot I'll, I'll tell you having done it myself it takes a lot to get your package ready for that so um starting now even though it's not due till june is really the right answer and then fitness testing i feel like it, we talk about it every uta and every uta we get a little bit more of an update so um fitness testing starts again in july i think that's correct at this point in time we should be planning one july uh, for us to be starting the fitness test uh, as we mentioned last month please look at that chart uh, that i have not committed to memory but it's the uh, the chart that tells you based on when your last test was and then what the score of that test was um then when your next one is due. So not the, the whole wing won't be due January, or excuse me, uh, July 1st. Uh, it will be a portion of the wing uh, and then we'll continue on a on a monthly schedule. So the waist measurement is still, even though the new AFMAN came out for fitness, the waist measurement is still in that AFMAN, but that has been waived for this test uh, starting in July, unless they come out with something between now and then. It will still be the push-ups, the sit-ups, and the run. And then the last thing that I have um, is just just an update that um, an announcement so that you can put it on your calendars. It's really far out. But Airfest 2022 is happening at the end of March in 2022. So 26, 27 March. I haven't been here for an air show because it just happened. The time frame didn't really work out. So have you been here for an air fest and what, what can people look for in that? Yes, it's great. So yes, a year out, uh, our very own Lieutenant Colonel John Schwartz uh, is one of the leaders in that. He has already sent out emails communicating to both wings, the 6th and the 927th. So the end of March in 2022, and uh, I'm not sure if they've announced which uh, aerial demonstration team is coming, but, you know, we expect, uh, you know, Blue Angels or Thunderbirds, expect, uh, you know, F-22 demonstrations, expect a lot of static aircraft on the ramp for display. What the what the wing does here, which is really great, is that Friday prior to the air show, that'll be a, a family day. So they'll still have practices. Those All those aircraft will be doing their, you know, their actual practice maneuvers and demonstration flights, but there's going to be very little people on base. It's just four or the base populace itself. So you can bring a family out and that happen if you decide to not want to face the crowds uh, and the uh, the traffic and the other things that will be here on Saturday and Sunday. So that's still in the works. Uh, granted, we're a year ahead and so many more details will come together, but but a great time for, for the base and a time if you love aviation to get out and see those things. And if you've been on base during these last few weeks, the F-35s have been here, so we've been having our own little mini air shows. Really does get you excited for that air fest. All right, sir, so um, that's all that I have for this UTA. Lots of things happening, lots of moving parts. Do you have anything that I forgot to ask or that you'd like to add? Uh, no, I have nothing else to add, Lisa, but as I've ended the last couple uh, podcasts, thank you all for what you do. We're all working through a, a difficult time with uh, the COVID environment and then the stresses that that applies to finances and to family and to schooling and to, you know, children and activities and, and 
you know, the activities that you like to do and go out and what have you. And depending on what state you live in, uh, you could be affected at different levels. And yet here you are, you know, each UTA, you're putting on chem gear, you're getting trained in your job, you're doing all the different things that we are asking you to do. Uh, much of our wing is still deployed right now in ops and maintenance. They should be getting back just after this UTA coming up. And so we're going to be happy to see them. But thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for what you do day in and day out to make this wing a, a success. I appreciate all of you greatly. Thank you, sir. And for the resilience portion of today's podcast, we're talking to Miss Andrea Davis Worthy. She is the Florida rep for the Military One Source. We also have Miss Brooks from our the, our Director of Psychological Health. Welcome to the podcast, Andrea. Uh, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. And we talked earlier, this is your first time doing a podcast. So excited to introduce this to you. Can you, so our unit has reservist airmen that come in on drill weekends and this podcast is for them. Can you tell us a little bit about your job and what Military One Source does? Okay, my job as a state consultant is basically to travel around the state um, and go to different military bases and talk to military personnel, which includes, you know, service members, family members, leadership, to tell them about Military One Source, explain what we do, and to um, let them know all of the services that are available to military families um, that they can use. And there are a variety of services um, that we have everything thing from, you know, counseling to financial to libraries. You can even use Military One Source to like plan a vacation, which I've done. Oh my goodness, I had no idea. That's amazing. So I'd love to hear that there's a bunch of resources and they're available to military and their spouses and children, their dependents. It is active duty, guard and reserve, regardless of your activation status. Okay. And so let's dig in. I think the first thing that most people think of Military One Source, they think of counseling. So let's get that one out of the way. And then and then I still want to learn about all the other things that Military One Source does for us. So first with counseling, can you walk, or just in general, with anything that we're trying to access Military One Source for, can you walk me through the process of, I'm interested in tr- learning about or how to do or get counseling, learning about finances, you know, whatever, planning a vacation, which I just learned. What do I do? What's the first step? The easiest way to do it um, really is to call our triage center for anything that you're interested in. And what they're going to do is co- ask you a couple of questions. What are you interested in? Any specifics or whatever. And they're going to go over that specific program for you and just basically tailor it to what you need. People who don't want to call into our triage center, we have a whole website, huge website that you can access is militaryonesource.mil. You can create a login and it opens the website to you. If you don't want to do that, there's a lot of information you can still access about any program on the website. And there's a big red button um, in the middle of the website. You can click on that and just start a chat and they'll tell you about anything that that you want to hear about. What are some things that people can call to get counseling for with Military One Source? And I know that there are some things that Military One Source is not really set up to help with as far as counseling. So can you walk me through what those, um, some things that we, we may be able to get help through the Military One Source and some places, some things that we might have to go somewhere else to find care? Okay, so the program that I was referring to is called our non-medical counseling program. And the non-medical counseling program is for or everyday life issues that everybody deals with. It could be, you know, relationships at home or at work. It could be communication issues. It could be um, relationship, grief and loss, parenting issues, just anything of an everyday nature. And you can access Military One Source, like I said, from the website where you can get on and just start chatting with one of our people from the triage center. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can actually call in to Military One Source and tell them, hey, I have this issue with, you know, my child and I need help with it. That's an everyday life issues that everybody deals with. And they will ask you some specific questions and connect you with one of our counselors and they'll give you more than one choice for you to proceed with that. And those counselors aren't necessarily on base. They could be near where I live, even if I don't live in Tampa. It could be, um, I would imagine with COVID, you know, everyone had all these new stressors in life and just trying to navigate your new normal and how things are going to go and having somebody in your area that can help you kind of walk through that journey with you is really important. So appreciate that opportunity to have that kind of um, care given by 
by Military One Source. What are some things that people may think, oh, I'll just call and try to get help, but really they need something a little bit more? What are, what are some ideas about that and how does that work? So issues that the non-medical counseling is not appropriate for, it would be issues where you have like a diagnosis. It could be, you know, something like PTSD or fitness for duty or something that involves medication and maybe a psychiatrist. Non-medical counseling is not for serious issues like that, but that does not mean that Military One Source won't help you. What they will do is probably contact, say, TRICARE and do a warm handoff to find you the higher level of counseling or the expert yeah, to deal with that particular issue. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions because people will call in and say, OK, I have a diagnosis of this or um, something involving, say, substance abuse. Non-medical counseling is not for that, but Military One Source can and will still help you. That's outstanding. And I know um, it's got to be super frustrating to be in that position where you feel like, I know I need help. I know I've got something that I have been working on in the past or because I have a diagnosis to, to be like at your bottom and say, OK, I need I need help. And you reach out to Military One Source and then find out that it's not really the right place to go. But that warm handoff is huge. And just a quick note, because we were talking with Miss Brooks, when that warm handoff happens, there might be a bit of a a copay or something because it's not going through the free service of military one source for non-medical. You're actually getting medical counseling that has, is going through your insurance. So there may be a copay. So we just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that they will still do that warm handoff. It may not be free, but you'll still get the help that you need. I want to let Miss Brooks talk for just a second in case I miss something. No, I think you all, um, you explained it very well. Right. There will be times when military one source will not be able to help with certain issues. Issues of trauma it may be better dealt with um, long term therapy. So it may be better dealt with a therapist that specialize in trauma therapy. We want to I, I think what Andrea said is correct. The most important thing is to get the person in the hands of the resource that will most effectively help them out. I think that's where I come in. If a member is interested in utilizing those services. Like I've, like I've said in my in the previous podcast, I don't need to be the therapist. I want to put you in the hand of the person that you feel the most comfortable with. So I can sit down with you and I can talk with you about some of those issues that's going on and we can do a quick triage before the triage, right? Um, simply going over, is this something Military One Source will most likely fund? If not, what are the resources are out there for you. One more hard hard question for the military one source before we move on um, past the non-medical counseling is we talk about there are 12 sessions that are allotted per issue. So what happens if I'm talking to my therapist and that I've gone through military one source to get and I feel like we're really making some progress, but we hit that 12 limit mark, but we've uncovered some things that I really, the reason I was stressed out is because I have other issues that I'm dealing with. What are the, what, are there some options for that? Or is it then I just go, go to my military or my insurance to try to get help through that way? Yeah. If there um, is help needed beyond the 12 sessions, easiest thing to do is to call Military One Source and say, hey, I'm making good progress. What are my options here? And they will tell you what your options are. And you can work with your therapist through Military One Source to get you what you need. Excellent. Excellent. So it doesn't just have to be me as the airman talking to Military One Source. My therapist can actually engage with Military One Source if they think there's a reason to continue. I think that we have covered, unless there's something else you think you want to add about the non-medical counseling opportunities through Military One Source. No, I think we pretty much covered um, everything. Okay. What are some other, like we talked about, you talked about vacation planning, financial um, counseling. What are some other op things that Military One Source offers our airmen? We're in the tax season. Military One Source has mill tax. It's a tax program where you actually get to go through the Military One Source website and you get to do your taxes. We have a tax program um, for absolutely free. Okay. Um, very similar to H&R Block. TurboTax, except you don't have to pay for it. Um, and you can also get to talk to, you know, tax experts who deal with like military issues and ask specific questions that you don't have to pay for. So um, there's that part of the financial. What if I'm struggling with like balancing my checkbook or just general um, personal financial readiness? Is that something that I can get help with through Military One Source? Yes, we have certified financial counselors. Um, you can call in, be triaged and say, hey, um, I am struggling with budgeting. I want to start planning for retirement. I want to buy a house. I want to know how much house I can afford. Or I want to start a college fund for my child. 
They're again going to ask you specific questions and connect you with a certified financial counselor. And they will give you more than one choice where you can talk to this person, um, sit down and tell them what your issues are, and they will help you work out a plan to, to reach the goal that you're trying to reach. So you're not on your own trying to navigate this, you know, big thing that you've never done before. You have people in your corner helping you. That's amazing. And again, you do. It's, it's absolutely free. You don't have to pay for that. Very awesome. Okay, so what are some other things that we can do with Military One Source? I'll tell you about some of my favorite. We have health and wellness coaching where you get to work with health coaches to reach any type of personal goal that you've set for yourself. Some, you know, popular ones are the typical, hey, I want to lose weight. I want to eat better. I want to start an exercise program. And they will work with you up to one year as being like your personal coach here where they will check in with you, help you craft out a plan. They will be your accountability partner. Wonderful program. Okay. And that's great because I know that they do stuff through the Health and Wellness Center here on base. But if you don't live near here, using Military One Source to help with that might be something that's a little bit more convenient for our reservists who aren't here all the time. Okay, and another you know, hot ticket item, it is month of the military child. Military One Source is doing all types of, you know, trainings and some podcasts through Facebook, you know, for children and parents and all kinds of activities this month that you can access through our Facebook page. And parents can also order what we call a goodie bag for their child that it's like a little, um, it's not a zipper bag, but a little pull bag with a bunch of goodies like pop sockets and pens and all kinds of stuff that kids like. Oh my gosh. And I would say as a parent, you're always looking for extra help and like, how do I do this the best that I can? So that's a really great resource. Right. And and really staying on that track, we have digital libraries that you can actually access from the website. We have a whole children's library from, you know, pre-K up to high school and that it helps with everything from English to history to math, all types of, you know, interactive programs for every child. And I can tell you it's wonderful because Because last year when school shut down because of COVID, the digital libraries and all of the themes actually saved my life with my two kids and made it much easier for us to continue learning at home. And also tutor.com where you get free tutoring. I know through COVID, um, and I really need to check this, active duty, of course, is eligible, but Guard and Reserve and DOD employees were also eligible for this service where you get virtual tutoring for your child one-on-one in like hundreds of subjects. Okay, tell me about this vacation planning. Okay, it's called Armed Forces Travel. (laughs) Okay, so if you go on the Military One Source website, at the top there's this little drop down button and you'll see like different websites and one of those is Armed Forces Travel. Um, And you open this thing up and um, you have to put like your DOD information in there so it can verify you. Um, But then um, you can... um, Um, actually map out a trip if you're going to say I'll use the Florida Panhandle because that's what we did last year use that to search for all types of hotels campground you know rental cars hotels everything and with this site you get um, a lot of those activities at a really good discount through Military One Source. Well, this has been super informative and I appreciate you taking time to come all the way from Orlando to talk to us on the podcast for our airmen. Is there anything that I forgot to ask that you would like to add before we go? Okay, one of the the things that I'm really proud of with Military One Source is when you call Military One Source, all of your information is confidential, okay? It is not reported to your chain of command. It is not reported to other family members. It is not released to other agencies. It's between you and Military One Source. And I tell young airmen and privates this all the time. Don't be afraid to call in because we're not going to go and report it to anybody. Okay. now there are some exceptions to that. Um, If you call Military One Source and you report any type of maltreatment in the family, you know, spousal abuse, child abuse, neglect, something like that, that's a safety issue that has to be reported. If you call into Military One Source and tell us I'm going to hurt myself or somebody else, that has to be reported. Or if you call in and say, you know, I just committed an illegal act. That has to be reported by law, and we actually do get those calls. But outside of that, when you call Military One Source, that's between you and Military One Source, not going to be reported to anybody. And our goal, 
Government gives us one job to help you live your best military life. I love that. Military One Source is here to help us live our best military life. Thank you so much for coming out to talk with us. Really appreciate your time. It is my pleasure. And that's a wrap. Before I go into the closing, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everybody who has supported the podcast. I am, this is my last drill weekend. I'm moving to Combat Camera Unit in Charleston, South Carolina, at Joint Base Charleston. And I uh, just wanted to say it's been such a blast getting to create this product for all of you and for the people that give me feedback that say that you've enjoyed it. I appreciate all your support and anyone who's still listening all the way at the very end of this. I'll appreciate you listening all the way to the end. Thanks for everything. We hope to keep the podcast going there may be a small break or it might not we, we're still working on it but just wanted you to know if, if it, it may skip a beat for a month or two but be on the lookout for it again i think there's value in it and i've loved hearing the feedback that i've gotten from folks that have listened to it so appreciate it thank you so much for all of your support and let's close it up if you have any questions that you would like answered on the next podcast email us facebook messages or stop by the pa office in the headquarters building We will ask the experts and get the answers to you right here on this podcast. Thank you so much for listening in as we do our part to keep the 927th Citizen Airmen informed so you can be always ready. 